Okay. So part of what we want to think about is for this course in particular, neural networks tend to be used in a lot of different areas. Uh, the focus for this course is really sort of around dynamical systems. And uh, so what we want to think about is what can we do with neural nets to help us understand dynamics, whether we're going to do prediction of dynamics, some kind of regression problem with dynamics. This is where we want to start thinking about our specific way that we want to train neural networks uh, to be useful for engineering problems. Okay? So I'm going to give an example here, which I think is pretty intuitive, that will help us understand what we can start doing with neural networks. So I'm going to come back to the Lorenz oscillator. Okay? The Lorenz oscillator is fairly easy to program up. Let's look at it here. In fact, here's the code. Right, I'm just going to put it all in text here uh, and, and instead of calling a right-hand side function. So I'm going to simulate the Lorenz equations. I'm going to take a dt of 0.01. So this is going to be my snapshots. I'm going to collect data. So this is going to be, in some sense, my label of data. So I'm going to actually say I know the time snapshot of each pair of data. And what I'm going to try to do is use build a neural network to do predictions of the dynamics. So I'm going to build a essentially an integrator from learning from lots of trajectories so that I can give you some initial condition and you can predict the future with a neural network instead of running something like OD45. Okay? So I'm going to take my training data, set uh, the difference between times at 0.01. I'm going to run it to time 8. So my t goes from 0 to 8 in steps of 0.01. Okay? So that would define one trajectory. My parameters I'm going to pick them to be 8 thirds, 10, 28. Okay, so I'm just going to fix parameter space for my Lorenz, run it over time. And in fact, here's the Lorenz solve, right? Lorenz at t of x, t and comma x, and then I define the Lorenz system right there. That is the differential equation for Lorenz. And what I'm also going to do with this is I'm going to really crank down my accuracy on these. So I want very high precision solutions or higher than the default. So my ODE options for this are ODE set, the relative tolerance is 10 minus 10, and the absolute tolerance, sorry here, uh, it's something similar. It's like it's 10 to minus 12 or 10 to minus 11. So crank this way down. Those are my ODE options. So I'm going to really try to get very nicely resolved trajectories that are very accurate. Okay? So that's it. So I'm going to take that. That's my solve. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a bunch of trajectories. And what I'd like to do from that is to learn a mapping from my solution at time t to the solution at time t plus delta t. That's the goal. Because if I can make a mapping happen, in other words, I can write it some form of an integrator through a neural network that makes that happen, then if you give me an initial condition, I can say, where does this trajectory go? I plug it into my neural network. It advances at delta t. I plug it in again. It gives me a 2 delta t. Plug it in again, 3 delta t. So I just iterate in this network, train network, and it can tell me the future state of the system. Okay? So that is going to be the goal. So let's go ahead and look at some of this. So I have an input and an output. These are going to be empty for now, but my input is going to be the solution at t. My output is going to be t plus delta t. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to train 100 trajectories. So this j loop is going to go through 100 randomly selected trajectories. Okay, and here's how I randomly select them. The initial condition is some rand 3 comma 1. In other words, I pick randomly distributed variable and this here will give me a uniform distribution between 0 and 1. So I take off half. So now it's going to be, this will give me a random number between negative and half and a half. I multiply by 30. So somewhere between negative 15 and 15 in the x, y, and z directions. That's my initial condition. 100 initial conditions. I run OD45 from time 0 to time 8. So I have 100 trajectories with a bunch of different initial conditions. I run them. And what I look at for all those trajectories, I map the input, which is the solution at y1, n minus 1, to the output, which is one time step later, 2 to end. Okay? So I'm going to go take all those pairs. 
all of these pairs from this time to delta t into the future. Okay? And then what I'm going to do here is I'm actually, every trajectory, I'm going to do a plot 3. So I'm going to plot it and I'm also plot where the initial condition was. So this is going to give me a diagnostic of all the trajectories I'm looking at. So I'm going to run this and you'll see what I mean by this. So here it is. Here's the picture. This is my training data. What you see here is the combination of 100 realizations, randomly chosen initial data. And you can see it just goes to your familiar Lorenz attractor. And these red balls here are where those initial trajectories, trajectories started. So now what I have is information on the transient as well as information about this attractor it goes to. Okay? So that's going to be my training data, right? So those are my truth. And my truth then, notice that what my truth does, my truth actually has a lot of information about, has all the pairings of t, t plus delta t. So it knows, oh, that is the label essentially I'm giving it. If you know what t is, delta t later, here it is, and I have all these pairs across all these trajectories, and I'm going to now train a neural network to try to say, if I give it a new initial point, can my neural network now give me the mapping? And so if I just run it through the neural network, I will actually get an accurate um, evolution of this thing looking like as if I was running OD4.5. Okay? So this is one way you might think about it. if I actually had data on a dynamical system with lots of trajectories and I had no idea what the underlying physics was, I could say, well, just train snapshots from T to delta T. I could build a model that would be agnostic to if I, whether, if I knew what the right-hand side function was or the differential equation was. I just have something that takes me a future step delta T. Okay, that's one way to view what we're going to do here. Okay, so let's go down here and train a network. The point I want to make here is that it's really easy to train neural networks. Here it is. In fact, I'm going to start, start it going before... Uh, Let me just run this thing. Okay, so here is my neural network that we're going to train. It's these five lines of codes. Okay, here we go. So the output of this, here it is. It's training the neural network right there as we go along. Here's the diagnostics in the neural network. I'll tell you about the structure in a moment. So this is training three layers, and here are the three layers. I'm going to do a feed-forward network, and each layer has 10 nodes, 10 nodes, 10 nodes. So that's what's pictured right here. I go from my input space, which is the 3x3 OD system, to 10 nodes, 10 nodes, 10 nodes, and then I go to my output layer, which has just the 3. So I'm going from x of n to x of n plus 1 in terms of time. Okay? And all I'm going to do is pick three layers then. I have three layers of the network. The net la network layer 1 is a transfer function, which is log sigmoidal. The second one is a radial basis, and the third one is pure linear. I just made those up. So it's three layers. I just picked three different transfer functions. And then when you do the net command, it says train the net, train this network. Here it is. Train this feed forward network, these layers, with the input and the outputs. And this is what you get here. This diagnostic tool comes up, which allows you to look at how this training procedure goes. So five lines of code, and it's starting to go. And you can see up here, what's happening is it shows you the network structure here. So I have these three layers of 10, 10, 10 with these different type of structures, which is a log sigmoidal radio basis and, and a pure linear function. And now it's telling you how many epochs it's training. You can see here it keeps updating. Tells you its performance and the gradient uh, as its computation. So there's a lot of diagnostic features that are going on here. And this thing will sit there and just crank away on the data. Remember I've given it a lot of snapshot pairs. And right now it's training and you can see what the training is. It's using a Levenberg Marquad because it's a nonlinear optimization. This is built for nonlinear optimizations. And I can even specify different things I want it to do and how I want it to train. And what's going to happen is after it's done training, it will give me some performance metrics. Okay? More than that, what I'm going to do in my code here, let's put that down for a minute, is after I have that, I'm going to do the following. I'm going to pick two new initial conditions. Okay? 
And so with these new initial conditions, I'm going to take that new initial condition and with that trained network, I'm going to say, okay, let me run what OD4.5 would give me for the future state of the system out from time 0 to 80, sorry, time 0 to 8. And let me take my trained neural network, which gives me a map from T to T plus delta T, and take my initial data, throw it into my neural network, get a next step. This is what I do here. So I run, first of all, here, OD4.5 with the trajectory. And what I do here is I just take my initial condition, throw it into net, and I get an output. And what I do now is I just keep recursing on this, right? So that gives me delta t into the future, put it back in, 2 delta t in the future. And what I want to do is compare what does OD4.5 do where it's set down to tolerance of 10 minus 10 versus this trained neural network. And it's very easy to train. I just showed you. It's like five lines. Five lines of code, and then when I execute it, once I have the net structure, and it takes a while to run, right? You can still see it's running. It will come back and give me this net, and then I can plot the result of that. So that is one of those initial conditions. And then I can plot a direct comparison of the time series of the different variables here. So for instance, here I picked in this subplot the first, second, and third. So x, y, and z of Lorenz, I show you what, what, what my neural network gets, and I show you what OD4.5 gets. And one way to think about it is OD4.5 is the truth. This trained neural network is an approximation, and we ask the question, how well does it do? So that will come out here and show us how we do. Okay? So we can do that for a couple different initial conditions, and we can also plot this in some 3D figure here. All this code's available, so once this thing is trained, you'll see it gives us a very rich diagnostic of this thing. But here we are. Let's just come back here. We're now at 177 iterations. The performance is down to is uh, down at 0.0035, very small here, and the gradient is down uh, in the 10 to the minus 4 regime. Okay, so we're just going to let this run for a little bit and. And maybe I'll have to cut it here and come back once it's done training. I'm back. I let this thing train for a while. So that's the biggest thing with neural nets. The amount of time it's going to take to train some of these networks is going to be quite large. You know, I, five lines of code is all it took to set it up. But then I have to wait for a, quite a long time. So you're not going to have the ability in a lot of neural network training to do interactive computing, right? You're going to be doing these very large optimization problems. So you want to set them on your back and on some server somewhere, let it train for a while and come back. Here, this thing went through uh, about 440 iterations, and I actually stopped it because I wanted to finish this lecture up. But I had pretty good errors that it converged to and so forth. And in fact, you can start looking at some of the features of this when you start thinking about uh, when I look at the performance. Here is the performance of this thing. So this shows you the convergence as it was actually training. Now I stopped at 440, and you see here it does a training, a validation, a test set, and it looks at the performance on each. So this thing was getting better and better. I could have let it keep going, but I decided to stop it at this point. Okay? But you can see this is down here. This is 10 to minus 4. So I'm getting very nice convergence results. It's just very slow. Okay? So right away this tool that we have available to us, this neural network tool, gives us a pretty good way to evaluate how we did, okay? Now what I want to look at now is something like this. And you know, I just picked two random trajectories, and it turns out they might have not have been the best, but you know, since I, they were randomly chosen, that was actually just the computer picking them. Uh, and so what is this plot here? This plot here shows you two initial conditions that were not in my training set. So this is now in my test set. So I'm going to say I have now two initial conditions randomly chosen, and what I want to do is ask the following question. From these two red points, I'm going to run my OD4.5 solver with this absolute tolerance and, and relative tolerance set way down. Okay, so a very accurate simulation of the OD4.5. And what I'm going to compare it against are the dotted lines you see on top of there, which are this trained network taking those same initial conditions and advancing the solution every delta t. And you can see the actual solution and the OD4.5 seem to be pretty dead on. And that's kind of remarkable, right? So essentially what I've done is I've trained this thing to be this amazing 
coder. So let's see if we can zoom in here. It's hard to do in three dimensions. So what I've done instead is instead of looking at this, we can also look here at this plot here. And what this is, actually let's go back to here. So what this plot is here is the two initial states. So with one of the initial conditions, what you see here, and the second initial condition, the Lorenz versus the neural network. So what I've done is I've just basically run, uh, and they're right on top of each other. The blue and red are right on top of each other. In other words, my neural network is basically exactly dead on with the OD4-5 solver. Okay? Now, this isn't so interesting because it hasn't switched lobes, maybe just two bad choices. Let's run it again with two other different initial conditions so you can maybe see a little bit more diversity of what's going on. So let's bring back our code here. And what I want to do is start from here. So not, I don't want to train the network again because that took forever. Here, I'm just going to run that section again. So this is where... Again, remember, that was just training the network. And now, once I have it trained, I'm not training it again. I'm just going to take it, run it through, and here we go. Here's a maybe a little different view. Two different initial data points. OK, hold on. It's getting the second one on there. There we go. OK. So here we go. These are two new different initial data points. And here you go. So let me just get a view here. OK, here we go. So the red dots, two initial data points, and you can see I do really well tracking initially, and then you can see one of our predictions falls off the actual solution, right? But one of them tracks pretty well. So you can see that the neural network is going to fall off, right? We know that there's a sensitivity condition around the Lorentz equation, but it's remarkably how long you stick on this thing. And remember, the neural network sees time steps of 0.01 where your OD45 is taking much smaller time steps to keep that 10 to minus 10 accuracy. So this is uh, this, the, your evolution there in 3D. And then if I look here and do a comparison, here's what you get. So eventually the blue and the red separate, the truth as well, uh, in, the, in the, the neural network versus the OD45, they diverge. Right? So that happens right about here where they fall off of each other, whereas these guys stay directly on. Okay? But it's kind of remarkable. I trained this neural, neural network to do this. Basically, it gives me a pretty good approximation to what the OD is doing. Now, if I didn't know what the OD was, imagine how useful this is. I didn't know is Lorenz. I just simply have time measurements of a system between t to d t plus delta t. And if I had just had that alone, and I don't know what the equations are, I can use this neural network to train for me a module that would take me from time t to t plus delta t. And you can see it works remarkably well against the truth. So these are the kind of things you can do with neural networks. These are the kind of things you can do to train and start to augment your understanding of the dynamical systems. And I do want to point out, there it is, five lines of code. Extremely simple and exceptionally powerful. It does take a long time to train that, but once you have a trained network, you're, you're, you have this now new way to predict future states. And I can do this even if I don't have the underlying dynamical system. So this is where we're going to go with neural networks and start thinking about them to help us understand complex dynamical systems.